Okay, everyone, the 2023 Lucid Air Touring. This is not the baseline version with a single motor. It's also not the crazy uh, grand touring version, which has something like 1200 horsepower. This is the, probably the version that you're going to want to buy. It's got two motors, more than enough horsepower, and a lot of really cool luxury features. Uh, but before we get into how it drives and all of those features, let's talk a little bit about the foundations of the car. The chassis of the vehicle is a unibody chassis, like a sports car or a luxury car, not a body on frame chassis like a truck. So it's geared towards handling, sportiness, uh, rather than off-road farm use, which makes sense. The suspension in this thing is pretty solid. It's a fully independent front suspension and a fully independent multi-link suspension in the rear. This particular model does not have the air ride suspension, which in my opinion is a good thing because I've had cars with air suspensions and they're great until they break and then they're sometimes just impossible to fix. The brakes, cars either have drum brakes or disc brakes. Drum brakes are, they last a long time and they're cheaper to make and cheaper to buy. This thing has disc brakes all around for better performance, better handling. Five train of the vehicle. So a regular gasoline engine car has an engine under the hood. That engine creates rotational force, which is connected to a transmission, which has a bunch of gears in it. So those are basically what I'm saying is the engine rotates all these metal parts before finally your wheels rotate. So to all these parts that are connected in a regular gasoline vehicle, because this is an electric car with no gasoline motor, there's nothing under the hood, there's nothing in the back uh, like a Porsche. Lucid, because this is an electric vehicle, there's an electric motor in between the rear wheels, which spin the rear wheel. And because this is the dual motor version, there's also another motor about the size of a watermelon in between the front wheel which is pretty cool because you've got these motors right next to the wheels which means when you step on the gas power delivery is instantaneous in a, an electric car all of the power is available all of the time just like an electric window motor you hit a button and you get 100 percent power immediately which is why this 5,200 pound luxury car is able to accelerate to 60 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds, which is amazing. This is, this is like Porsche 911 Turbo Ferrari territory. This is crazy. Well, let's talk about the way it looks. The two competitors to this vehicle are probably the Tesla Model S and maybe the Fisker Karma. The Lucid is somewhere in between. It's not a super aggressive looking car and it's not docile and commodified either. It's short, it's wide, it's squat, it's got these big wheel arches, wide back end, wide front end. It's got these short windows, which makes it look a little bit sinister. It's got this cool two-tone paint, but it's reserved enough that it's not shouting. So people who don't know what a Lucid is, parked on the street, these just look like regular cars. But people who like cars will definitely notice that this is a unique, different cool looking vehicle interior of the car is really comfortable it's really roomy in here you get your own climate control even the back of the driver or the passenger seats the back of the front seats look really nice as well you get a cubby hole plenty of storage this thingy and check out this feature i mean look at look at how wide the doors open there's no real reason for that, but it's very cool. A uh, similar thing is going on back here. When I open the trunk, it doesn't, the whole thing doesn't open up. Just uh, watch what happens. Is this, there's additional space underneath here. Yeah, it's pretty good. You can pull down, you can put down the back seats and you'll have even more space. Look at that. Of course, because this is an electric car, there's no engine up front, there is more storage space. So check out this front trunk here. There's a little bit of space. This is about as much space as you would get in a Mazda MX-5 Miata's trunk. But if you pop this panel off, look, tons of space. It's like a little bathtub there. And this is a subtle thing, but the windshield is massive and it turns into a panoramic roof 
there's a little bit of a panel gap there and then the entire roof is made out of glass so subtle but classy self-closing doors seating position is pretty good a um, little bit of a lack of visibility here because of this a pillar and the back window is pretty tiny uh, but that's okay because there are cameras everywhere all right let's take this thing for a spin see what it's like to drive so what is this thing like to drive well suspension is very good at absorbing bumps and it's really comfortable there's something about these seats it's like an s-class mercedes they're very supportive you don't feel many bumps you can easily take a long distance road trip in one of these things without feeling fatigued it feels very good it steers as if it handles well but it's not so uh, aggressive that you're constantly overcorrecting or having to hold on to the steering wheel and it does have three different driving modes so it's got smooth swift and sprint sprint is one where when you hit it you have to agree to some sort of waiver it's the fast aggressive driving mode with which unlocks all 620 horsepower but even in smooth road when I hit the gas this thing is quick the other thing I really like about this is it doesn't uh, use the speakers to make fake noise what you're hearing is the whirring sounds of the actual electric motors and they sound good oh man that acceleration is really nice it feels like you're in a <laughs> very very quiet porsche it's 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 odd from 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds has a top speed of 155 miles per hour and it does that in relative comfort it feels like i'm in a luxury car which i am the range is always a point of concern with electric cars this particular car it's listed as having a maximum range of 420 but uh, the driver, the owner of this car, has uh, had it up to 434 miles of range, according to the computer, which is pretty astonishing. And then the Grand Touring, the um, upper echelon of this model, has a 525 mile range. So the range is pretty amazing. Uh, the horsepower is astonishing, 620 horsepower. The torque, it has close to 800 pound-feet of torque, which is nuts. And you can feel it when you... I'm driving 50 miles an hour right now, or 40 miles an hour when I hit the gas. Pins you to the seat. This thing is scary fast. Absorbs bumps really well. Very luxurious ride. It's quiet in here. Quieter than a Tesla, I dare say. Uh, the interior quality feels better than a Tesla. Uh, yeah, this thing is really nice got a bunch of really cool features everything is controlled by this big ipad looking panel uh, in the center console and i would say the responsiveness of it is good not as good not as smooth as a tesla unfortunately one feature that the owner wanted me to check out is launch mode which is activated uh first of all i have an open road there are no people around um I'm going to hit the brake and hold the brake and the gas pedal at the same time. I see launch mode activated and now I'm going to let go of the brake pedal. Oh, that is quick. That is quick. That's a zero to 60 time. I also like the way that it handles. <laughs> the steering wheel feels really good in curves. This thing is just super fun to drive. Uh, the good car looks really good. It's super fun to drive. Uh, the range is better than other electric cars at 425 miles and 525 for the Grand Touring model. Uh, power is amazing. Uh, I mean, I keep saying it's fun to drive, but this thing is really, really fun to drive. The handling, the steering, the ride quality, it's quiet in the sense that you don't hear much road noise but you can hear the electric motors whirring which is a really nice combination seats are unbelievably comfortable visibility is good uh, it looks like robocop's helmet i like the front headlight thing um, the bad it doesn't 
quite have the supercharger network, the Tesla charging network uh, that Tesla has, but you still, you do get a lot of range, which is fine. Another downside, they haven't quite worked out all the kinks. The owner has told me that he had a problem with the window going down halfway and then being a little bit glitchy going back up. Uh, that has since been uh, remediated. That has since been fixed. The interface looks really great for all intents and purposes, works uh, beautifully. It isn't as responsive as a Tesla and there are some, there is a little bit of hesitation every now and then. Uh, but considering that this is a relatively new entrant into the EV market, this is a really astonishing vehicle. Like I am blown away. I expected it to be creaky, crappy. I expected the interface to be terrible. I expected the drive to be okay. But no, this is nice. All right, hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you uh, next time. Oh, and if you want to learn how to buy a car, check out wattoauto.com, upper left-hand side. I'll teach you how I bought my first Porsche for under $4,000, which I just then sold for three times what I paid. I did that over and over again with 40 different cars. I bought my second Porsche for $3,500. I bought a ton of vehicles for very little, and I sold them for a lot. And I like to teach how to do that. So if you want to hear my uh, story, uh, visit wattoauto.com. Buy a hat, buy a t-shirt, and I'll see you next time.